today is all about sewing business and how I actually started my sewing classes school and all the things that I had to plan and prep to actually open up the school. I got to a point where I felt I want to share my skills and my knowledge by opening up a sewing school and I also love the interaction with you know other women and men that absolutely just love sewing they love the creativity and they love to learn new skills because I'm all about learning new skills and I really feel that there's something that I want to share um, you know and pass on knowledge that I have gained obtained, experienced all these years as a fashion designer, you know, an entrepreneur, and all the things that I have done around the full spectrum of fashion. So this is Tanya Sutherland, and if you enjoy this kind of content about, you know, how you can take your skills and turn it into another form of income, then this is the place to be. So let's get started. So I am in my classroom. Now, this is my classroom where I teach um, sewing classes. I also have designer workshops that I do. There's also online um, courses that I have, as well as my online collection patterns, which is PDF downloads. I still do some custom designs as well. And this is also a consistent income that I get on a monthly basis, according to my classes that I, I pre-plan and set up. So what will you need to get your classes started? Well, first of all, you've got to ask yourself, what level and experience of sewing do you have? The other thing is, are you a people's person? Do you like to work with people? Can you teach? Are you, do you have patience? You know, you've got to realize you have different types of people in the class. Some are very fast and they capture and they understand things very quickly and others are a lot more slower and don't always understand and especially when you work with you know very young students um, like teenagers they take a little bit longer to grasp things and they take longer to finish projects because this is still totally new to them than where someone's already in their, their 30s and 40s that understands a lot of different things in life and they can get things done a lot more quicker, you need to realize that people work at different pace and you have to be patient and you can't rush them. You've also got to ask yourself, you know, do you have enough space? Where are you going to be teaching? Do you have a place from your home? Do you want to maybe use some space maybe at your local church or community center where you can perhaps, you know, hire space on a monthly basis where your students can come and learn to sew? You're not going to need much. Um, you need to have your space. You need to have tables, table chairs. You'd also need to work out some kind of, you know, a module of what you're going to be teaching them. So, you'd like to teach, would you like to start with beginners? Are you more for intermediate? Are you more for advanced? Now, I could have jumped straight away into doing more advanced, where I could do pattern drafting, you know, pattern design, fashion illustration. Absolutely enjoyed this kind of content. How about give me some love? Happy to also grow my YouTube channel by subscribing and press the you know the like button down below. And if you press the subscribe button and help me grow my channel, I'll absolutely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Going straight into pattern design and making your own patterns. But my question to myself was that how many people do want to know how to make patterns from scratch? to draft their own patterns only for themselves, for their wardrobe. It's a lot of work, it's very intense. Um, people that want to do that are more designers or someone that has really been sewing for a long time that wants to turn this into a business or to really is a business and they'd like to have more knowledge. So I found that would be less people than the amount of people that want to come and learn to do beginners. And I love the excitement 
um, and how inspired people are when they learn a new skill and I can see their confidence when they're actually making garments that they can wear themselves. So you determine which levels you want to do. Before lockdown, I actually had designer school and I was teaching fashion design, fashion business dot, I pattern drafting, but with lockdown happening, we decided to give that, put that on pause and to rather do that on the online courses, which will be coming up. So you can decide how do you want to structure your classes? Do you want to do classes during the week, in the evenings or on weekends? So what I do is I in particular have classes on a Saturday, which are three hours long and the course runs between four to six months. So I'm offering a beginner's course and in the beginner's course, I have a, basically a list of all the things that I teach my students within that six month period. Now, some of, them, some of the students finish that within six months, some take a bit longer and the other want to stay longer or they actually leave after six months. I still have students that stay much longer as well, that just continue learning from me as well. But if you want to work on set courses, you need to prep and plan so that when your students come every Saturday or for every class, you've already you know, got a layout of all the things you're going to be doing. And when you advertise your classes, you need to stipulate there that it is for beginners, intermediate or for advanced. Now, beginners need to know that you understand that they have never opened a sewing machine before and they feel totally intimidated by the machine that's still inside the box. So you must make them feel totally, you know, um, confident that you understand where they're coming from and you're going to be teaching them the, the absolute basics from unboxing your machine out of the box, um, how to thread the machine, how to sew, how to use all the different stitches, etc. So you need to put that all in as well. So when you create your advert, you need to put there for absolute beginners that, have, that know nothing at all about sewing, learning from, you know, learning how to sew basic sewing stitching to making up a garment, putting a zip in, etc. Now, when people start to phone you or email you or WhatsApp you and say to you, I'm interested in your class, could you send me more information? So you would need to, before the time, have a list of all the sewing equipment and let's say sewing kit that your student would need to um, purchase and bring along for your actual course. The other thing is you need to have some kind of like, you know, module put out stipulating all the different garments and all the different techniques that they're going to be learning so that they understand what it is they're going to be doing and they can prep before the time. So they know they need to bring some zips, some fabrics, their threads, their needles, their pins, scissors, all those different things. So you are letting them know what to get before the time. Because you're going to understand that this is not their, their comfort zone and the things that they always do. So when they're going to a fabric store, they don't know what to buy. They don't know what they should be getting. They just feel overwhelmed and they, they need your guidance. So that is very important that you do that. So what I have created was I created a file. And in my file is basically all my steps for my beginners, what I'm basically going to be showing them and what we're going to be doing is in my file, plus everything that's in my file, I have it all written down and I actually send it to them via email of all the different steps of things that we learn to do in the class for that six month period. And then after the six months, they can still learn a few more basic things and then go into intermediate classes, which is about a six month course as well. So I have that all written down for them so they know exactly where they are. I even print out a book so that when they come to class, they know exactly where they are. And, you know, there's all pictures of all the things that they are doing inside the book as well. And then I use my commercial patterns. So I put my commercial patterns all into Arch Lever files. And inside the files, I write down what they are, whether it's dresses, trousers, skirts, jackets, tops, knitwear, which is stretch fabric, which I keep separate because it's a different way of working with stretch fabric than woven fabric. And then inside my files, I have all the pictures of the main cover of the patterns in my file 
and my patterns are put into ziplocs which are actually put into um, containers shells and they are all labeled so i know exactly where they are i teach my students how to understand the commercial pattern and how to take their correct body measurements how to trace that commercial pattern onto um, <clears throat> onto a normal soft paper and they can keep that pattern for themselves so my commercial pattern does not get damaged um, they can trace it off and then they have their own pattern that they can use and keep for themselves and then obviously i teach them all the different sewing techniques as well you can also have sewing projects like for instance let's say um, we're going to do a camisole project okay so you can offer like a one day come along and you're going to sew a camisole and you could either supply all the material have a little kit and the pattern and you just tell them to bring along their sewing machine their scissor their pins um, their thread etc or you could have uh, even inside the pack you could have the fabric the threads um, and maybe even a tape measure for them and then the pattern inside so i also have my pdf patterns so normally what i do is if i'm going to do a workshop i can actually forward my pdf downloadable pattern to all the students that are coming for the day um, and then they would just print it out at home and then they would paste it all together and bring it to class and then we'll actually cut out and make the garment in the class so that's also another thing you could do is workshops because that also is very exciting and it's you can push your price up a little bit more because it's a workshop that you're doing for the day that's something that you could offer as well you could different types of workshops you could do handbags you could do more tailored stuff more casual stuff things for holidays um, for birthday gifts etc etc so today is just talking about me opening up the sewing school um, and I always ask my students what else would they like to do and if there's a demand for um, more complicated, more advanced um, sort of different techniques of adjusting, adapting um, commercial patterns, I'll even show them how to do that and I'll do a set course on that as well. So I hope this gave you some kind of um, you know, understanding how easy this can be for you to start your own sewing school. If you do have, you know, the basic um, sort of communication skills so that you can talk to your students and understand the different types of personalities you'll be working with in the class. Um, you know, and also to, be, to realize that this is also a business. You might love the passion for sewing, but you presume this is still going to be a business as well. And you still going to be firm enough to make sure that your students pay on time. You know, they do pay the full amount as well. You know, so create some kind of invoice, email this to them, you know, beginning of the month and to remind them that the school fees are due. Um, because this is also, you're doing this for an extra income on the sideline, or this could be your main income because you might have several classes in the week and add it all up, that is your career and this is your monthly income. So you've got to take it quite serious and you come across very professional, you make sure everything is pre-organized, everything is planned. Your students will see that this is very professional um, and they will obviously pay you on time um, because you've got to make sure that they understand that this is the business. You've got to be careful that students don't take advantage of you and maybe keep skipping classes and don't want to pay for those classes or they'll keep asking if they can um, you know, make up for that class. But the thing is that you were there all the time and you still continued with all the classes with the other students and so that they're not committed to their class um to the actual class periods that you have now booked out for them so just be careful people don't take advantage of you um after all this will be a business for you and um, you have your set times and you know people need to respect that as well so get yourself organized with your paperwork to make sure that you have everything pre-planned before the time that you do have patterns which patterns are you going to be using for the students and what sizes do you have up to what sizes can you go and what kind of kind of, kind of garments you're going to be sewing some more elasticated pants soft easy little tops soft easy sort of types of dresses we're going to go more structured, more tailored, line, darts, you know, contouring, all those kind of things. So you decide what level of experience that you have and what kind of clients you would like to target. And then you start your advertising. You can market in your local area, your Facebook groups, um, your Instagram.
whole plan layout of preparing your, your module notes, your invoices, your costs, your expenses, and what you need to actually get your whole sort of classroom set up. The next thing is to just do it. Don't feel overwhelmed. Don't keep putting it off. Believe in yourself and just go for it and actually start your business. You can generate an income out of the life experience that you've got in the sewing and fashion industry.